What's going on, growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. I've got one today that I think will bring a lot of value. I'm going to share my 200 IQ strategy for easily getting free mulch for your garden. And I'm not talking about wood chips. Let's go. All experienced organic gardeners, and even a lot of new beginner gardeners, know the importance of a mulch for a good, healthy organic garden. Not only does an organic mulch help retain the moisture, moderate the soil temperature and help even suppress the weeds. It also draws in a lot of microorganisms like worms and stuff that come in, they break that mulch down, convert it into humus, which then acts as fertilizer and even helps improve the overall soil structure. The thing is when it comes to mulch is not all mulches are created equal. Some mulches are good for one scenario and not so much for the other. So it reminds me of that old saying, you know, the right tool for the right job makes all the difference. And when it comes to mulch, there is no difference. It's all about that right to mulch for that right scenario. The problem is to find a good annual mulch that's like accessible, cheap, or even free is tough. And that's what we're gonna work on in this video today. A lot of you know, when it comes to growing perennials, I love using wood chips as a mulch. I think it's just perfect. But when it comes to growing annuals, some things like lettuces and radishes, I don't think that wood chips are the ideal mulch. One of the reasons is they tend to be a little heavy for plants like the lettuces and the radishes to kind of push out of the way. And also the wood chips can end up being a little pointy and spiky. They can cut into the side of your annuals and even some of your young plants. But when it comes to growing perennials like my fruit trees and stuff, I think that the wood chip mulch is absolutely ideal. It's the perfect mulch for the particular circumstance. But when it comes to those annuals, I think what we need to use is an annual mulch. What I mean by an annual mulch is something that's ideal for putting around your annuals. It won't like cut into them or damage them at all. And also it breaks down relatively quickly. A great example of an annual mulch would be straw. The only problem with straw is usually hard for me to find or it's relatively expensive. I can find hay, but that has seeds in it, so I don't want that. And even when I do find straw sometimes, I'm worried that it's sprayed with like herbicides or something else. So I don't really like using it particularly. I love the Ruth Stout method of the thick straw gardening. I just don't think it's readily accessible for most people. So that's what got me thinking and why I ended up making this video at this time of the year. I was like, hmm. What, is, uh, what could be a good annual mulch that's readily accessible for most people and uh, you know that's basically free? And then it came to me and hit me. I mean, it's staring me right in the face. It's leaves. Leaves are the ide ideal mulch for annuals, but they have to be processed a little bit. Then I was thinking like, how can we get good access to leaves? And then the 200 IQ idea came to me. It was, you know, all the people local at this time of the year, they're raking up all their leaves into piles for us, putting them into bags, and then just sticking them on the side of the road. We could then just go grab those leaves, you know, process them a little, and then use them as a beautiful mulch. It's free, it's easy, it's local. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. I've actually been using this process for years now. And last fall, I just went around and grabbed some leaves and then processed them and use them as mulch this year. So I wanna go over some of the basics of the things that I've learned through the years of what you wanna look for, what kind of leaves you wanna get, and how to process them to make sure you get the most out of the leaves to get that good, high quality free mulch. When it comes to grabbing your bags of leaves, there's a few things that I've learned that I wanna share with you. The first one is you don't just want to go out and grab the first 10 bags of leaves you see. You want to source the bags a little bit. So what I like to do is find some people with mostly deciduous trees and I like oak is my favorite, maple too, and make sure they have dominantly those trees. You don't want to get um, leaves that have a really lot of pine needles them if you don't have to just because it ends up not being as good of a mulch in my opinion as the leaves do. So source, make sure they have the right trees. Also, when you get the bags, you wanna look for ones that are thick. Like if you come close, this is a thick quality bag right here, as opposed to this one right here. The other one that's like thin, because these thin bags get ripped up easily and this is gonna to have to sit over the whole winter, remember that. So the thick bags are better to help keep the mulch dry inside of it because we're gonna to want to use this as a mulch, so we want it to be dry. After we find the good bags, we don't just wanna grab, we wanna look inside the bags to make sure that, um, again, it's dominantly deciduous leaves, not a lot of pine needles, and we also don't want a lot of grass in here. This is what we want. Some nice oak leaves like this, it's beautiful. We do not want a lot of grass because if we have a lot of grass in here, then we will have the worry of 
whether or not they actually, the people we got the leaves from actually sprayed their grass. So grass is one of the things that's often sprayed. That's why we really want to avoid that. So making sure that we get the right leaves to start off with is going to be really important. So just a little bit of kind of sourcing, a little bit of research will help you with that. After we've chosen some high quality bags of leaves, we want to bring them home and put them in a spot that they can remain relatively dry if we can, because again, we're going to use these as mulch. So it'll be a lot easier to process when they're dry. When spring comes, what I like to do is head out into the backyard, so a section just like I'm in right now, and what I do is I mow a section where I'm gonna dump out the bags of leaves. So I mow all the grass. This way when I cut the leaves and dice them up and they suck the leaves up, the lawn mower, the lawn mower doesn't suck up a lot of grass with it too because we don't really want a lot of the green and the brown mixed because the green material usually doesn't end up working great as a fresh mulch. So I cut a section of all the grass. After that, I take my bag of leaves, dried leaves, I'll dump them out in a section and kick them around to spread them out just a little bit, just to make sure that they'll like dice up evenly when I uh, mow them. And then I'll just take my lawn mower and just ride over the leaves back and forth. This is a super important process because when it comes to using leaves in the garden, like you'll see with these leaves right here, you could get big leaves like this and much larger leaves, you know, giant oak leaves. And when you have huge leaves like this, I mean, bigger than this, but when you have big leaves, they end up matting the soil out and the ground out, which is not what we want. So whole leaves could end up being a terrible mulch because they mat the ground out, preventing the soil, it like almost suffocates the soil a little bit, preventing it from getting good oxygen and also preventing like for an even distribution of water flow. So that's why we have to process these leaves down. So after we take these leaves, we dice them up small into the lawnmower and it sucks them up. We just, you know, open the bag, check out the size of the leaves and we'll notice that they're much smaller, more diced up and this is what's gonna prevent the leaves from actually matting out. So we've converted you know, these leaves from something that wouldn't be a good mulch, and just by processing them and cutting them up, it's converted into an excellent mulch that we're gonna use around our annuals. Now, we can start taking our diced up leaf mulch and using it around our annuals, knowing that it's not gonna like damage any of our annuals or anything. So we can use it around some of this lettuce, like right here. Just put it around the base, pretty thick. And then say we had, you know, we put the mulch right here and say we planted like uh, green beans. We could put green beans directly into the ground and they would push right up through this leaf mulch. If we didn't dice up these leaves and they had the ground all matted then, and you tried to plant beans, the beans wouldn't be able to push that leaf up it wouldn't be able to move the stuff out of the way. So when we have stuff like this, we could plant things directly into the ground, some of our annuals. Again, an annual mulch works so well for our annuals. When it comes to our radishes and stuff, we can see that some of these need to be thinned, like I'll do right here. And then after we do thin them, we could go around and just mulch around these with these diced up leaves. So I love, again, a nice annual mulch for my annuals, but some plants, I use both annual and perennial mulch. Let me bring you over to my peppers. So my peppers right here, as you come in, you'll notice, um, when these peppers were young and they were, you know, just, they weren't woody, they were very soft, uh, you know, stems that they were just really young plants. I mulched with leaves, as you can see right here. Here's my leaf mulch, my old leaf mulch all in here. So when the plants were young, I, I mulched with leaves because you know it didn't damage any of the annuals, but it helped still retain the moisture, bring in the worms and everything. Then as it started to get really hot and the stems of my peppers went over to like a more perennial woody, then I came in and put wood chips all around the base of them to again, help retain the moisture. And the wood chips are so easily accessible and they break down slow. So for something like, uh, this annual, I use both an annual and a perennial mulch. I get a little bit of the best of both worlds, which I think is important. Something I want you to think about is, let's come back over here to this annual mulch, something like uh, leaves or straw. One of the big advantages to using uh, annual mulch like this in a raised bed is if we um, you know, take some of these leaves and after these plants are done and they get mixed into the soil, that's okay. That actually ends up being a good thing if some of the leaves get mixed up because the worms and the microorganisms will come in, break this down and just convert it to humus, building our soil structure. But if we have wood chips and we mix them into the soil, that's a terrible idea and, and that's horrible. A scenario where we have wood buried and then we pile um, layer soil on top of that, that's great. If we have soil and then 
layer wood chips on top of that, that's great. But once we start mixing wood chips with the soil, we run into a host of problems and it's gonna be detrimental to your soil. So again, if we have a nice annual mulch, we can actually mix some of that into the soil in our raised beds, but we do not wanna mix the wood chips into our raised beds. You know, that's gonna be a disastrous idea. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope this video opened like a new door of mulch for you, allows you to save money and also to have some fun. So me and Tuck go around and we collect the leaves. We have a blast doing it. It's like, it's fun. We're driving around, you know, we grab the leaves and then we're thinking like, you know, thanks you kind neighbors and uh, local people. Thanks for getting all the leaves, raking them up, putting them into bags, setting them on the side of the road, uh, letting us get all the free mulch and letting us get some quality bags out of it too. So it's like, it's funny when you could like switch, you know, your mindset and when you can get in touch with the local environment and like use the things locally to your advantage and just be a part of the process. It's, it's fun and it's rewarding. So we want you guys to try that too. And hey, it could save you a buck. But before I let you go, I want to thank Kim Grace for your new channel membership. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. It means a lot to me and Tuck like, that you're willing to contribute. And we also want to thank everyone that are giving the super thanks. That means so much. And uh, we don't know what else to say really, but thank you. So we do appreciate it. Before we let you go though, we want you guys to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. Tuck is wandering around here somewhere, you know, having a blast, but you know, the big boss, the big tuck, uh, and James will be back to you again real soon. We. Oui.